MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm my co-host, George Gilbert, big data analyst at our Wikibon research team. Uh, we're excited to come out to these events. We want to talk to the top executives of Splunk, but also talk to people who are practitioners in the field running businesses. And it's exciting to talk here with customers. Our next guest, Andrew Lin, SVP, Chief Information Security Officer at Orstown Bank. Welcome to theCUBE, great Thank to see you. Thank you very much, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for spending the time, because we'd love sure. to get into the trenches, because at the end of the day, the vendors will tell us one story, and the reality is, you know, sure. how does those products render themselves in the marketplace? And Splunk certainly has a great success. We're not super critical of Splunk, although we have some tidbits we kind of go after here and there. Understood. But for the most part, you're a customer. So, security at a bank, Talk about the size of your bank yep. and some of the challenges because you know what's happening is you see consolidation happening uh, yeah. and how do you grow into the business? So that could be good or bad for the economy, but in general, we want to see more banks out there doing yep. more business. So talk about the size of your bank, growth strategy, yeah. et cetera. So, so a little history on me first. I actually was uh, with JP Morgan Chase for 15 years until about two years ago. And, and made the switch to a, a much smaller community bank where the challenges are the same, uh, but the budgets are, are a much smaller. So you have to be, you certainly have to be creative. Um, I think you'll find that if you talk to other community banks that there are a handful of providers that provide most of the core services for community banks. They run the core, um, they run uh, their mobile banking apps, their online banking apps, and they provide the first level cybersecurity support. So, we outsource our SOC and all of the, the frontline security uh, monitoring and, and analytics to another company. The, the, the problem and challenge is that they're servicing thousands of community banks. You get a watered down, one size fits all uh, service and, and we couldn't look ourselves in the eye, in the mirror and say we were doing everything we could to uh, detect and respond to cybersecurity events, nor could we look our regulators in the eye and say the same thing, which is why we wanted to explore products like Splunk, where we thought we could add on additional layers of sophistication. It's like the movie in Jaws, I need a bigger boat, the sharks are getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> That's exactly right, and so we needed a, a small bigger company, boat. You need a bigger boat, so you got to have one from a customer standpoint, you got to have a great product, yep. and you want to have syndication, you have all kinds of relationships in there, so, so fraud detection's one, but then you got compliance. Sure. How do you balance that as a, as a chief security officer? You've got to one, maintain the bad guys stay out, and then obviously relationships are key. Yep. It's not easy. So how do you no. stand that up very quickly? Is it relationships with Splunk? How do you manage all those third party relationships? But it's, take us through the day in the life of that. Yeah, um, so, so a couple of thoughts there. The uh, uh, Splunk was, uh, as I said, kind of an add-on to a security service that we already had. Um, it gives us the ability to monitor beyond what the SOC can monitor, and, and in many ways, um, actually learn our customers' behavior beyond just the security metrics, so we can um, understand uh, the way our users transact their business, when they deposit, how often they deposit, what they deposit, um, when they withdraw from ATMs, how often they withdraw from ATMs, how much money we need to keep in the ATMs. So it's, uh, it certainly provides us the intelligence to build stronger relationships with our customers. Um, since we are also a small community bank, uh, we have a lot of vendors. We don't want to be in the business. We're not good at running a data center. We'd rather not run a data center. We'd rather do what we're good at, which is running a bank. So we, we love products like Splunk, Splunk Cloud that allow us to move that stuff out of the data center, but it becomes then a big question of vendor management because we are entrusting a lot of data and processes to vendors. So we have to have a fairly sophisticated vendor management program that just makes sure that um, the, the, this is from the compliance angle, that the vendors are financially robust and that they have controls that we would expect them to have if we were doing the service ourselves. Is, um, was Splunk serving as like a one layer across all these security services? Yes. So that you could sort of have um, almost like horizontal visibility and then 
that was your customization layer to get views that you couldn't get from anyone? Yeah, well, well I think we originally brought Splunk in to answer that question of can we look ourselves in the eye and say we've got enough information to respond to a breach? And at the time the answer was no. But since, since we've implemented Splunk, we figured out there's, there's a myriad of other things we can use it for. It's great for operational analytics. If, if all of a sudden someone can't get out to the internet, the IT staff can look up in Splunk and find out if they're being dropped at the firewall or, or dropped on the proxy server. We also figured that uh, you know, if we could get customer uh, business transaction information going into Splunk, we can monitor for fraud. Um, we can monitor for ATM usage. So we're kind of expanding from what started out as security centric to more business focused uh, use cases. Yeah, and, and this is really the key value. You can use the software as a service model, integrate that into your security as you've been at the big company, JP Chase. Yeah. You've, seen, you've seen a lot of stuff, but they're getting stronger and stronger. Um, I want to hold that, let's bookmark that sure. question, but I want to weave in and tie in uh, Eric Sammer, one of our uh, audience members, asked the question. He said, how does Splunk reconcile the increase in new sources and volumes of data with their, their message of only collecting important stuff? Um, ubiquity of data is a big thing. So George and I always talk about stream processing, how do you get the events, time series versus you know, holistic network. So the question is, how do you get as you get more and more data coming in, how do you guys reconcile that? How does Splunk reconcile it? Do you go to the other parties? Do they have the product? What's your comment? Yeah, well, luckily, luckily enough for us, we aren't big enough to probably have that problem at the level that the, the person asking the question is. Yeah. We've got um, probably dozens of sources, as opposed to, I'm sure he's got hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands yeah. of sources. So um, from our perspective, it's, it, it's, it's not a big problem. Um, mm -hmm. I imagine that when you get to the point where it is yeah. a big problem, you're going to have to solicit Well, Chase help. probably has that problem. I mean, we were at, George exactly and I were at right. the Facebook scale event last week uh, in Silicon Valley, we all the top DevOps guys talking about how to scale up all these large hyperscale companies. And one of the big things was the underlying technology at the big companies, server storage, networking, really hasn't changed in 20 years. Sure. And it's so, but yet virtualization's out there and the streams of, of processing, how do you, you're going to miss stuff. So you need mathematics, you need machine learning, yeah. How is those two things changing your business? Math and machine learning. So one of the things I've learned over the years is if you spew out a big report on a screen and you ask a human to pour through tens of thousands of lines of something, it's going to be about 10 seconds before they delete it, they throw it in the trash, or they, they just realize they can't keep up. Um, I've always been a big proponent of pick the five, 10 things that you know you want to go after. Use cases that represent bad or suspicious behavior, very specific use cases. Focus on those 10 things. And perhaps at day one at the expense of missing the 11th or the 12th or the 13th, I'd rather be good at 10 than, than halfway good at 20 and really bad at 100. And you prioritize that really on the customer experience sure. and, and cost. Cost, oh, for use, sure. Can you give an customer example? Experience. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the, the credit and debit card fraud uh, which is rampant for not just community banks, but all banks. Um, that's real dollars that hit the bottom line. It's real easy to make a business case to <laughs> invest in uh, computer learning or, or other automation tools to help detect and, and prevent that So stuff. what's the state of the art in fraud right now for the bad guys? Is it, we were talking about before we came on. Just take us through that use case of, you know, what's some of the behavior, because everyone has experienced either directly felt sure. it or the fear of it's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. So take us through, how do you guys look at that? What are some of the patterns and what are you seeing? How are you jumping on that? Give you a couple of perspectives. Um, the, the recent rash of merchant breaches, uh, Target, Home Depot, P.F. Chang's, you name it, there's, there's hundreds of them, have certainly contributed to uh, a large volume of stolen card numbers out on the black market. Um, we have seen uh, in our experience that generally card present transactions, so that someone who's actually purchased a stolen card, created a physical copy of it. When they go out, they will first test it at a merchant, and if it works, then they're going to hit you hard for 5, 10, 15, 20 transactions, all for a reasonable dollar amount, nothing for $10,000 that's going to set off alarms anywhere, but hoping to get those transactions quickly enough before you figure it out, and generally figure it out. So it's beat the clock kind of mentality. Sure. Figure it out for a lot of community banks means your customer opened their statement and they realize there's charges that they didn't make and they call you. So that's a month later. Um, the, the smarter criminals are uh, for those who have fraud detection techniques that can see when um, cars are usually used in Pennsylvania, all of a sudden there's a charge in California. That's pretty anomalous, that's something to look into. Some of the criminals are becoming sophisticated enough to sell the cards back into the local market where they were stolen. Wow. So when they shop, shop at the local grocery store, 
and they buy a gift card for $400, it looks like a transaction for someone who would normally shop for yeah. groceries there. Yeah, little geolocation. Exactly. You know, little, they're yep. big data savvy uh, yep. crypts. So, so this is, we were talking earlier about how security is part of overall IT operations. Yeah. Um, as Splunk has grown its footprint, um, what's the, what is the big bigger job it's responsible for now beyond the layer that you had over different services. Um, is it your sort of primary console for, for operations? It is one of the consoles that's used for operations. Um, I, I think it depends on what operations you're talking about. So tell us what's the sweet spot for the different ones. Um, I don't know that we've discovered the sweet spot yet. We've got a number of consoles. We've got uh, you know, monitoring like Nagios monitoring has consoles that tell you when servers are up or down or CPU usage has exceeded certain amounts. We've got consoles for monitoring ATM fraud, which we use in Splunk. We've got consoles that uh, folks we use to troubleshoot if there are connectivity problems, that's in Splunk. Um, we're a bit uh, dysfunctional in, in the fact that we have so many consoles. I don't know that you will ever find that there's one console that solves everything. Um, certainly, we see a lot of opportunity in Splunk to, to eliminate or, or consolidate a number of those into a single console. Is that, um, if you look at, at uh, operations, and security is part of operations, sure. um, what percent of your budget goes towards that? And you know, do you see vendors coming along who are trying to sort of you know, really take a leap in terms of productivity um, and, and taking labor out of that? Um, so the, the portion of our IT budget that is spent on uh, security operations, was that the question? Um, security as part of an, uh, overall operations. Okay. You know, of the overall sort of OPEX of maintaining your landscape. Yeah, I think we are we are somewhat unique among community banks that most would probably tell you it's five percent or less for security. For security, and it, is there hey, something? John, uh, uh, all sponsors that are on the show. Is, floor, uh, is, is there something where so you can go beyond just monitoring security, like you were saying, you have ATM fraud, connectivity, um, you know, servers? Do you see uh, a growing footprint for one? or more operational you know, management products where you can get away from you know, very fine slices. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they, we, they're out there. I, we aren't um, mature enough to start looking at it at that high of a level. Okay. Um, I, I think we've, we've partnered with uh, Prelert to do some uh, machine learning and anomaly detection in the fraud space. That's one of the levels that uh, we know there's just so much of it, it's so rampant, and there's so many transactions that a human couldn't possibly pick up these patterns. So we're, we're certainly looking at automation in that space. Andrew, we got a break here, but I want to just get your final thoughts. Sure. Uh, looking forward to grow your business, knowing what's out there and what you need to do. What's going on with Splunk? How do you see those guys yeah, intersecting? You see new products you like? What are some of the, what's your feeling about Splunk right now and what yeah, they're coming out with? I, I think that We've learned that Splunk can be an integral part of our business, not just from IT operations, not just from security operations, but from making uh, business analytics and business decisions. That the, the, if we can get more data flowing into Splunk, we can certainly learn a lot more about our customers' behavior, and, uh, and, and that's information that our, our business leaders need in order to decide um, what's next, what products and services do we offer, which ones are people using, which ones are most profitable. Um, so that, that's so kind of where we see the future. So the fruit is obviously the, the, the dollars cost you. Sure. But there's outliers that you can turn into an opportunity. Outliers, data points. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. If, if, uh, you know, if we see a, a customer who uses the same ATM every Friday and it's not one of, it's not one of our customers, but they, maybe they work near, it's an opportunity to, to market on that ATM. Hey, if you join Orstown, we can save you the $4 you're paying every Friday when you take out money for the weekend. All right, Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Hitting the Security Perspective, Senior Vice President of Security at Orth Bank, uh, Orstown Bank. We'll be right back with more from theCUBE. Live coverage day one of Splunk Cars. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks, appreciate it, guys.